I wanted to talk to you guys about 2014. Now, I know with the modern war in Ukraine, with the more modern combat we've been seeing since 2022, 2014 can be very easily forgotten. But the war in Ukraine did not begin in 2022, even if that's when the mainstream media started to pay attention. I love using buzzwords. Mainstream media. The Russians first invaded Ukraine. Well, not historically first, but in this more recent conflict in 2014. After the Euromaidan revolution, after uh, Yanukovych uh, tried to move off of a campaign promise he did in the middle of the night and backed out of the association agreement with the European Union, people protested. He then responded to those protests by cracking down on them, by murdering many protesters, trying to outlaw protesting, and hiring literal armed gangs to try to put it down. Uh, that failed and made it worse that he fled the country after he fled the country there was an interim government installed and then the interim government hosted elections which then petro poroshenko was elected to petro poroshenko then in 2019 years later would uh be ousted in an election that had Zelensky come to power so there's the full timeline but anyway during that chaos, the Russians took advantage of it and invaded and annexed Crimea so they would have a more strategic port at the port of Sevastopol, the same port that the Russians have, that the Ukrainians have been hammering with storm shadows and drones, disabling submarines and transport carriers and all this other stuff. Uh, and of course, they also have destroyed the bureaucratic front facing headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet. Anyway, the war started then in 2014, but outside of Crimea, the Russians also got involved in the Donbass, and they got involved through a few ways. Now, the Russians denied this involvement in the Donbass. They had to admit to some of it in 2015 once their soldiers started getting captured by the Ukrainians in the Donbass illegally, deployed illegally in the Donbass. But another element of the war that is not talked about is how did all the rebels in the Donbass get guns and weapons, and all of the Russian soldiers that were fighting in the Donbass get guns and weapons. Some of the rebels said they just, you know, stormed storage facilities or they bought them on the international market, but most people suspected, anyone with two brain cells that is, is that these weapons came from Russia. And if you look at the type of weapons they were getting, it was weapons that would be readily available in Russia from their large Soviet stockpiles. But up until now, we didn't have too many public-facing co confirmations of this type of behavior. But since the invasion of Ukraine, a lot of these people who were supposed to stay quiet about Russian involvement in Ukraine, either through Wagner, PMCs, special operations, or logistics and supply, they were supposed to stay quiet. In fact, the logistics arm operated only during the nighttime, not showing their trains moving around and trucks moving around during the daytime so people wouldn't know that they're shipping weapons. But now they're talking about it more openly, now that Russia is very obviously inv involved in an invasion of Ukraine. So I want you guys to know that the complaints that you've seen from the Russians about weapons ship being shipped to Ukraine to support the invasion against them isn't a principled declaration of, oh, we're angry, all these weapons are flooding in and killing people. It's, oh, we flood this country full of weapons for eight years for these weapons to be used against the Ukrainians, but now this weapon flows in the other direction. The tides are turning, and now we're upset because the game that we, are, that we have been playing for years is being played against us. So, what we're about to watch is a Russian train conductor well not a train conductor he's like a logistics guy he manages logistics he moves around supplies um talking about how they moved weapons and tanks and transport and all this other stuff ammunition shells artillery guns into uh, occupied ukraine during the last eight years of fighting before the 20, uh, 2022 invasion let's watch and i'll read the translations out loud since many of you like to not just watch the stream, but also listen to it. This is from the blogger who was reporting on this. The more time that passes since 20... Actually, let's skip, let's skip this and just get straight to the admissions. I think that'd be easier. So the guy on the uh, left here is the is Peacemaker. This is the guy who was transporting the weapons. And on the right is the guy interviewing him. Hello, bro. Where are you from? Rostov. From Rostov. Rostov. 
Oh, Rostov. When it started, there was a lot of equipment that we carried over from Rostov to the Donetsk region, Ukraine. We transported equipment. So this happened from the very beginning, since 2014? Since 2014. But then we moved it at night. Well, that's right. Yes, during the day, the equipment on the trains was still there. One second. The equipment on the trains was still there, but at night, it kept moving. Initially, everything was like this. We were to transport all this by train to Epsenko sta uh, Epsenka Station Customs on the border of Ukraine and Rostov. First, there is the Markriv Kugan Railway. We delivered to the Umskanska Station, although we used to deliver it to Ilovsk. Uh, this is where a famous battle occurred, but it's also currently occupied. Until one of our railway trains were blown up. After that, we were forbidden to travel there and cross the border ourselves. And at night, we arrived on our electric locomotives and picked up trains from the Upseka station. We, in turn, drove there to the border, and they arrived at night. One second, he's talking very fast. And they arrived at night and took away the trains with equipment. And at night, without spotlights or light, they went to their place and moved all the stuff. Grad rocket artillery, tanks. There were a lot back then. Entire carriages of artillery shells and closed train carriages. But only at night. And we took our Russian soldiers, whole echelons there. All the forest belts, all the forest plantations were filled with our soldiers and equipment. Apparently, they also shelled the Ukrainians at night. Well, it is known that we surrounded them in Ilovsk. Yes, that's how it was, of course. So at that location, um, the Ukrainians were, were hit hard on the flanks, and they were surrounded, and the Russians offered them a corridor out so they could leave without getting annihilated. And then when they left in the corridor, they then just killed them all in the corridor. It was a very infamous example of the Russians betraying the Ukrainians. What they said on the TV was funny, of course. That's the miners were defeating the Ukrainian armies in those battles. This, of course, was funny because we saw this equipment was located at the railway stations. So what he's saying here is, man, it was funny watching those stories saying that the locals in the Donbass were the beating the Ukrainian army. We know that wasn't the case. It was Russian soldiers, Russian tanks, Russian shells, Russian artillery. This is the quote-unquote grassroots local rebellion that we've been talking about or we've been told about over the last eight to nine years. There was not enough support in the East to manifest a real takeover, so the Russians had to create one. You're driving and it's all there in plain sight. You go back the next day and this is already gone. All the equipment went to Ukraine. That is, there were artillery howitzer cannons there. Everything went there. Anyway, he, he goes on to show different pictures and confirmation that they have of him working in the train station. As you can see here, it's a picture of him operating the train and there's him in one of those electric locomotives. Here's him in front of another one of the trains. He's very obviously the train conductor, train driver. The reason why I'm showing you guys this footage today is that one of the main narratives you'll hear from those trying to make apologetics for the Russian invasion of Ukraine is that there was a grassroots rebellion in the East and then the Ukrainians in their cruel, cruel ways invaded and just started shelling everybody because they hate the Donbass children and just hate Russians so much. But we know that, especially due to recent confessions, that that was all bullshit. That the Russians invaded with their own troops, with their own tanks, and with their own guns. And of the local militias that did exist, they were supplied out of Russian stockpiles. They didn't just seize a bunch of rifles from police stations and hand it, hand it out to a couple thousand people to hold back the entire Ukrainian army, even if there was only 16 to 20,000 effective troops. That is not how it went down. It was Russian soldiers pushing forward the actions of the separatists. It was Russian tanks, Russian artillery shells, Russian artillery guns, and Russian trains managing the logistics. 
the Russian invasion of Ukraine did not begin in 2022. It began in 2014, not just of Crimea, as is often talked about, but in the Donbass as well. Even if they tried to cover up, that cover up has fallen apart as most Russians have come to the conclusion that the cover up is no longer worth it because now they are not fighting an asymmetrical hidden war against Ukraine. They are fighting an open war against Ukraine and they no longer need to lie about their intentions and actions. It is to wipe Ukraine off the planet. It is to create a Russian supporting state and or erase the Ukrainian state as they have done in occupied territory, you erase the Ukrainian identity and rebuild the Russian empire in Europe. And they have been pursuing that goal since 2014 endlessly through negotiated ceasefires that they didn't respect all the way till their 2022 invasion that they claimed was just a training exercise.